Hi everyone. Today we're talking about our parish vision of living and sharing the good news of Jesus. And uh, I really would have wanted to be there with you in person in the parish to talk about our parish vision. But obviously, as you know, our personal circumstances have changed and I'm kind of making the most of our new filming studio here in my parents-in-law house, along with all the uh, interesting challenges that has. There's a, a race car just across the road that likes to kind of start up and rev its engine. Everyone in the streets mowing their lawn, and my kids kind of just decide to come into every shot they can and, uh, and make their mark on filming. So we're just gonna go with the flow today, right? We're gonna break up the parish vision statement into three parts the good news of Jesus and how we live and share that good news of Jesus. And we're taking a, a little break from our uh, normal preaching series so that we can look at this vision statement. One of the things I want to do throughout 2021 is to uh, look at our parish vision and help us uh, pull it apart and understand how this drives ministry, how it helps us make strategic decisions and ministry decisions. Okay, so... As we begin, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much uh, for your love for us shown in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that as we hear this good news of Jesus today, that your Holy Spirit would help us to live it out and that we would see the importance of sharing this good news of Jesus so that people in the southeast of Tasmania may hear about Jesus, respond to him in faith and be saved. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I can think of three things. First of all, it helps us have some focus and some direction. Number two, it helps other people know what we're on about. Every organisation has a, a vision statement or a slogan so that you know, I guess, their, their purpose. And I think what better way than to tell people in our community that we're on about Jesus they're on about living uh, this good news of Jesus and that we're intentional about sharing this good news of Jesus. And finally, uh, I think a vision statement is important because it's kind of a call to action. It's, it's a rallying cry for us to do something as a church. Okay, so uh, as I said, we're going to pull this apart today in three parts. And the first part of our vision statement is the good news of Jesus. The good news of Jesus is the central part of our parish vision. And I wanted us to make sure that everyone knew that we were on about Jesus and that he is good news. He's good news for us as Christians, but also good news for each person in the southeast of Tasmania. Now, I've been part of some great churches in the past. Some have been known for, you know, their loving community within the church. Some have been known for their great and practical service for the wider community. And some have been known for their brilliant music and, and maybe their healing ministry. But when it came down to it, I really felt called that we should be a church that is known uh, for being all about Jesus and the difference he makes in our lives. You see, Jesus is good news. Why? Well, the Bible starts off by telling us that God made us, but that each one of us, starting with the first people and every person since, has turned their backs on God. That relationship that we had with God and each other was broken, and this is called sin. But you see, God sent Jesus to fix sin, to pay for it, and to rescue us from its consequences of death and separation. Paul talks about this really well in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. You see, once we were separated from God. But Paul continues, here comes the good news. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace 
you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, the expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. And here's the kicker. For it is by grace, God's favour, that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Once we were separated from God, once we were dead because of our sins, once we were under God's judgment because of sin, but because God loves us in his grace, his undeserved favour, God has rescued us in Jesus. He has made us alive just as Jesus Christ rose from the dead when we believe in him. We have new life in Christ. And just as Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God, we too now have access to God. We can come into his presence. Folks, this is the good news of Jesus. And this changes the way we live. Jesus is good news. In verse 10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Jesus is good news for us, but also for everyone in the southeast of Tasmania. Jesus is good news, and we respond to that good news by living changed lives. Paul talks about this in verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So as a church, we live this good news in response to what he's done for us in Christ. And we do this three ways. Up towards God, in in our hearts, and out towards the other people. So, up towards God. We live new lives directed towards God. Our hearts in obedience to his commands. Our hearts in worship of him. And our hearts fulfilling his will. Putting him as number one. We Secondly, uh, we live the good news of Jesus inside. We uh, are changed people. We become people filled with God's spirit, his love, his kindness, his patience, his hope and peace in this world. We live lives of devotion uh, to, to God in reading his word, in prayer, uh, in, in an inward life uh, of loving God. And last of all, we live the good news of Jesus in a community, in a family, in a church. Uh, we meet together for worship regularly. We meet outside of our church services to share our lives together and build each up in the faith. We share our possessions and we're generous with each other. So that's how we live the good news of Jesus. So we've looked at how the good news of Jesus is absolutely central to everything we do as a parish. Uh, Jesus died to forgive our sins. Jesus rose again to give us new life. And uh, Jesus is next to the Father, which means we can come into the Father's presence at any time. And one day Jesus is coming back, which means uh, we have heaven and the new creation to look forward to. Uh, we've seen how when we believe in Jesus... We respond and our lives are changed and we live out this good news of Jesus, both as individual believers, but also as a group of believers. And I tell you what, if that's all we did, if we just lived the good news of Jesus, man, we'd be the best church in the world to be part of because uh, we'd just be focused on loving God all the time and loving each other all the time and serving each other and sharing all the stuff we have with each other. It would be pretty cool. But there's a couple of things that happen to a church like that. The first thing is that a church that only focuses on living the good news of Jesus together becomes incredibly inward focused. If all we do as Christians is look after each other, well, uh, eventually we don't make any new disciples. We're just looking after the ones that are here already. And uh, as we all grow older and no new disciples are made, means, well, the church shrinks as, you know, the membership shrinks and eventually churches become unsustainable. The second thing that happens uh, to a church like that is that it becomes irrelevant to the community. You know, the world around us is not Christian. 
that in the southeast of Tasmania, people don't really know what happens inside the church community. And if all we did was focus on each other, well, we would just become a holy huddle. And that's not what Jesus wants. And that brings me on to my last point. Jesus uh, commanded us to love one another, yes. But at the end of the Gospels, Jesus gives these commands in all of the Gospels to actually make more disciples, to share this good news with other people so that other people may come into God's kingdom. Because remember, Jesus is good news not just for us, but for everyone in the southeast of Tasmania. Have a listen to what Jesus commanded his disciples at the end of Matthew chapter 28. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So because Jesus has all authority, he's given us this instruction. This is his plan to make more disciples of people throughout the earth, including southeast Tasmania, in Carlton, in Dodgers, in Lewisham, Sorrell, Orielton, Richmond, Colebrook, Campania, you name it, everywhere in between in our parish, right down the peninsula. Jesus wants people to come and follow him. And so we've been given this instruction to go and make disciples out of all people. We are to baptize them. We are to, to help them understand who Jesus is so that they can respond to him and turn from sin to life, to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we are to teach them everything Jesus has commanded them. And so we are to go and share the good news of Jesus. This characterizes what our parish is like. It's not just living the good news of Jesus. It's also sharing the good news of Jesus. And as we share the good news of Jesus in the way that we live, but also taking those opportunities uh, to have conversations with people about our faith, to just be really honest, the fact that we're Christians, that Jesus makes a difference in our life and sharing that with people, man, the Holy Spirit will work through those words and touch people's hearts. And the word of God will be sowed into their hearts so that they can respond. And I'll tell you what, uh, my vision and my drive from God here in the southeast is to see so many people become disciples of Jesus that our church buildings our gatherings can't hold the number of people that our staff that we employ can't actually look after the number of people that we don't have enough volunteers to look after all the people who are coming into our churches because they're beginning to love Jesus what a great vision that is right so living the good news of Jesus and sharing the good news of Jesus. Today we've looked at the parish vision that Jesus is good news not just for us but for everyone in the southeast. That we respond to this good news as believers both individually and together through living this out. And last of all we've looked at how sharing the good news of Jesus is the instruction Jesus has given us and the mission that we have at this time in history in Tasmania. Now, I know none of this is rocket science, and that's exactly why our vision statement is simple and easy to remember. It's nothing new. It's just, I guess, the gospel summarized in slightly different words. So uh, I hope today that what you gain from this message is to know how this good news shapes everything we do as a church. And as uh, we see in the coming weeks and months and years, we will make decisions based on these principles of living the good news of Jesus and sharing the good news of Jesus. My prayer is that these two principles would shape and direct your life as part of this church, that God would use you to further his kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's the race car. Can you hear it? <laughs>